In this video I just want to go through some of the um, elements of developing a good scientific blog for the Extreme Marine Habitat website. Some of these tips are useful for generic science blogs as well, so it's not just specific to this module. Now, writing for a scientific audience requires a degree of understanding initially of the material that you're going to present. So it's very important that you do a wide variety of reading surrounding the topic. This may be from general scientific articles all the way down to more scientific literature, peer-reviewed studies for example. But when you're presenting a scientific blog, you need to remember that your work might not actually just be read by scientists. You can make that assumption if you write a scientific paper that it will be a peer reviewed by your fellow colleagues, but secondly, that the target audience is mostly going to be scientists. Now with a blog on the internet, anyone can read it. So it's very important that you think about the language that you use in developing and producing your blog. That leads into the second point, which is really about the clarity of the blog in terms of its design and accessibility. You need to ensure that when you're developing it, that you keep an eye on how you present the structure and flow of the information. So you need to make sure that you use a clear subheadings, page headings, as well as the figures that you're using to illustrate your major points. They all work together in order to produce a coherent and cohesive blog structure and it helps the reader understand the information. One good tip is always to remember that the reader doesn't want to do that much work in terms of interpreting the piece. So you want to basically put the information on a plate that the reader can take away, digest and leave feeling that they've learned something. So for Eversex 3011, the Extreme Marine blog, you really need to think about your target audience and the kind of structure that you're going to put together. Now it's made especially hard for you because yes it's a blocking exercise but the primary audience as well as being the general public is actually me and the other academics you teach in the module. So you need to make sure that when you present your information you do it in such a way that it kind of allows a non-specialist reader to engage with the material but at the same time provides sufficient depth for someone like myself to come along scientific reader to gain something from it as well. So it's especially challenging for you in terms of producing this kind of blog. So with this assignment, the expectation level that we have is around about 3,000 words in length across the blog pages. So you need to make sure that you have sufficient scientific depth in there. Criticality, discussion, really showing that you've done the research around the particular area that you're interested in. People fall over often when they just haven't put the effort in, or they leave it all until the very last minute. So it's of incredible importance that as soon as we start going from day one, that we really work to keep this blog moving over throughout the semester. Don't leave it all until the last minute. Find an area that you're interested in around about the first few weeks and then develop that work intermittently throughout the semester in order to allow me to give you feedback throughout and allow you to work together as well as your colleagues to produce a good blog. So the rest of the area, don't leave it all until the last minute. The blogging exercise will be marked mostly online by myself, but you will have to produce a paper copy which will be submitted to Turnitin and a hard copy submitted to the department. And the hard copies will be marked by me, 
Dr. Turner and Professor Richardson. So the Mayor had copy, the formatting is not essential, but things like underlining um, or italicizing Latin names, punctuation, grammar, etc. all need to be spot on, irrespective of whether it's on the blog or in the hard copy. That's vitally important. You will be marked down for that. But you will not be marked down if a picture or a caption is not in exactly the right location. My instructions on that are explicit. So you should submit it on the 5th of December, which is this year's handling date. Future years may change, so keep your eye on the Blackboard site. For that, and then we'll try our best to get them back to you in time before your examination starts in January.